What's up guys, JNO here and we are back today with top 5 defenders so far 8 game weeks into the Fantasy Premier League season. If you like this new series make sure to smash that thumbs up button and subscribe if you're new and let's have a look at the top 5 defenders so far in Fantasy Premier League. Okay, we're starting straight off with number 5, no honourable mentions. These are the five players I am keeping an eye on in defence, and these are the five players that I'd recommend you do the same with. We're starting off with Russell Martin. Now, Russell Martin plays for Norwich, not exactly the strongest defensive unit in the Premier League. The way I've looked at these defenders isn't necessarily their clean sheet potential, because for clean sheet potential, I look at the club more than I do at the defender. So these defenders I've looked in as, can they score extra points? either through goals, assists. So Russell Martin had to come in at number five because he has scored three goals in eight game weeks. And the underlying stats say he is getting the chances, maybe not as many as other defenders, but he's been very clinical with those chances. He's had seven attempts on goal, six of which have been inside the box, and he's put 50% of his shots inside the box in the back of the net. Now, if he can keep that form up, he could become an essential pick at 4.6. He's currently on 30 points, so he is one of the highest scoring defenders so far. If he can keep this up, he's someone you could easily have on your bench, who if he comes in, could have potentially got a goal, or you can put in for the easy fixtures. Now the problem is, is he going to get many clean sheets? I doubt it. But he's cheap enough that you can try and play the fixtures and not worry too much about that. Number four is someone that is in my team, it's Craig Dawson. Now a lot of people say go for Johnny Evans because he's cheaper. West Brom are a team under their current manager who are known for getting clean sheets. But my argument against that is this. Craig Dawson may be a little bit more expensive, but in underlying attacking stats, he is far superior to Johnny Evans. Now Johnny Evans hasn't had that much time to prove what his attacking stats could be, but so far Craig Dawson is ahead on that front. He is on 34 points. Some of that is clean sheets, but he has scored one goal. But if we look at his attempts on goal, it's the same as Russell Martin at seven, with five from inside the box. And chances created, he's actually up there at six. So if these stats keep going, he's going to either get assists or goals and West Brom get clean sheets. So if you can get him in instead of Johnny Evans, I would suggest you do so. But Johnny Evans will still get you those clean sheet points. We, number three, we go with Jeffrey Schlupp. Now, the reason I'm suggesting him isn't because of Leicester's current defensive record. At the moment, they're going to concede a goal no matter who they're playing. But Schlupp is actually playing as either a wing-back or a winger. Now, he's out of position, and that out-of-position potential shows in his underlying stats. He's only scored one goal, and he's only on 17 points. But if we look, he's had 11 attempts on goal, seven of which have been inside the box, and he's created three chances for his teammates. If he can get a run of games on the team, he's going to keep piling up those underlying stats. We move on to number two, and yes, this is a man that is in a team that shouldn't concede many goals this season. It's Kolarov. Alexander Kolarov is going to get the clean sheets that Man City get, and he's going to get you attacking potential. If we look at his current stats, he's only scored one goal, he's had no assists, but the attempts on goal is at 12, with three inside the box. Ideally we'd want more of those attempts to be inside the box, but chances created, you're looking at 15 chances created for his teammates. Now, when Man City start firing on all cylinders, which I could potentially do from now, after that ridiculous victory against Newcastle, He's probably going to get you some assists when he whips it into the box. So I would definitely look at Kolarov. Only problem with Kolarov though is you have other options. Company is scoring goals. And you have Joe Hart who you could pick. And you have the other fullbacks you can pick. And the problem is when Clichy comes back, will there be that dreaded rotation where Kolarov won't play every game? And we move on to number one. And this was a tough decision for me because it was between two people. The reason the other person isn't in this list is because he plays for the same team. I've gone with Alderweireld. I apologise if I've butchered that name, instead of Eric Dyer. Now, Eric Dyer does have that out-of-position potential. 
is currently playing as a defensive midfielder and he has scored a goal or two, I believe it's two goals. But underlying stats wise, Alderweireld looks like he could score more. 5.1 million, he's got 34 points. I think this season Tottenham could be a solid defensive unit. He's had seven attempts on goal, all seven of which have been from inside the box. He's created one chance for his teammates. Now, I'm thinking that from set pieces, they have Christian Eriksen whipping that ball into the box. They've got all the world in there to score from set pieces. That is my belief with those underlying stats and the way he wins the ball when it's in the air. I believe he can get a lot more goals this season. And I believe he should be there or there about one of the top goal scoring defenders in the Premier League this season. That is why I've given him number one instead of Eric Dyer, purely because Eric Dyer's underlying stats didn't suggest as many goals as Older Wield, despite the fact he has scored more at the moment. Anyway guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Tomorrow we'll be moving on to midfielders. And remember, on this channel, JNO United, it's all about the game.